Sobek was an ancient Egyptian god with a puzzling and fluid nature. He is closely associated with the Nile crocodile or the West African crocodile, while being represented as a human with a crocodile head. In Egyptian mythology and folklore, Sobek was a god of fertility, waters, military prowess, and served as a protective deity that was invoked for protection against the dangers of the Nile. He often wore a plumed headdress with a horned sun disk or the Atef crown, associating him with Amun-Ra, and carried the Vaz scepter, representing power, and the Ankh, representing the breath of life. Sobek was unpredictable, and it was said that he sometimes allied himself with the forces of chaos. But why is his nature complex? What are the stories surrounding him? Is he being worshipped today, and what are the rituals done in his name? Why were crocodiles in some parts of Egypt worshipped while killed and hunted in others? What does his presence mean for our psychic life? Let's find answers to these and more questions in this episode of our Egyptian mythology series. Sobek had a lasting presence in the Egyptian pantheon, dating back to the period of the Old Kingdom of Egypt, up to the Roman period. Moreover, there are pyramid texts of the Old Kingdom where Sobek is mentioned. In one spell, the pharaoh was praised as the living incarnation of the crocodile god, and it says the following. Eunice is Sobek, green of plumage, with alert face and raised four, the splashing one, who came from the thigh and tail of the great goddess in the sunlight. Eunice has appeared as Sobek, Nis' son. Eunice will eat with his mouth. Eunice will urinate, and Eunice will copulate with his penis. Eunice is lord of semen, who takes women from their husbands to the place Eunice likes according to his heart's fancy. In this Egyptian spell, we can see the tonic properties of the Egyptian god and his impulsive tendencies of raw fertility. Some sects believe that Sobek arose from the dark water and created the world and brought order to the universe. As god of the Nile River, Sobek brought fertility to the land. It was even believed that he arose from the primeval water of Nun to create the world, and in the process, gave birth to the Nile River from his sweat. Sobek first appeared on a ceiling during the reign of King Narmer, the first king of the First Dynasty. This ceiling shows crocodiles facing a shrine that later became the symbol of the city of Shedet, also known as Fayum. Before we continue, consider liking and subscribing if you want more content like this. Your support is what puts a smile on my face. Sobek gained great popularity in the Middle Kingdom under the rule of the pharaoh Amenemhat I. The pharaoh had taken a peculiar interest in the Fayum of Egypt, which was a region soaked with the worship of Sobek. The pharaoh started many building projects to promote the deity, and most of them were done in the Fayum. In the period of the Middle Kingdom, Sobek had undergone some major changes. The most notable one was that he was started to get fused with the falcon-headed god Horus. This association placed Sobek closer with the kings of Egypt, which gave him a prominent role in the Egyptian pantheon. Moreover, the fusion made him a solar deity and a part of the divine triad of Horus, Isis and Osiris. Sobek Horus of Shedet became associated with epithets like Lord of the White Crown, he who resides in the Great Palace and Lord of the Great Palace. In later periods, Sobek was connected with the god Ra that gave prominence to his role as a solar deity. The Sobek-Ra association was prestigious and has gained great prominence through the expansion of cultic sites as the scholarly effort to make him the subject of religious doctrine. This is interesting to analyze from a Jungian perspective. At first, Sobek was a tonic deity, the unconscious force that inhabits the Nile, but later we see him as a solar deity, therefore the integrated conscious aspect as a product of the evolution of human consciousness. 
When it comes to etymology, Sobek's name is a place where scholarly debate reigns. Among the clashing of scholarly swords, many agree that his name is derived from a causative of the verb to impregnate. When it comes to mythology, Sobek was an aggressive deity with animalistic tendencies and the vicious reputation of his patron crocodile animal. Some of his common epithets tell us more about his nature and the most notable one were he who loves robbery, he who eats while he also mates, and pointed of teeth. Sobek first appeared in the Old Kingdom as the son of Neith with the epithet the Rager, but according to other myths he was a son of Set, the god of chaos. If we take a look at his symbolic animal, it is known for its power, strength and speed. These attributes were believed symbolic for the pharaoh and thus the word sovereign was written with the hieroglyph of a crocodile. This means that Sobek could protect the pharaoh and people of Egypt from dark forces. His ferocity was widely known and he served as a patron god of Egyptian armies. In some areas, a tame crocodile was worshipped as the embodiment of Sobek, while in others, they were killed and hunted for. It seems like Sobek began as a dark ktonic god who had to be appeased. We should also say that it wasn't uncommon for crocodiles to be mummified and shown in temples. Likewise, crocodiles were raised on religious grounds as living incarnations of Sobek. Upon their deaths, they were mummified in a grand ritual display as sacred, but earthly, manifestations of their patron god. He was also offered mummified crocodile eggs. Sobek also played benevolent roles in Egyptian mythology. He is most famous for helping Isis to unite the dismembered parts of her husband Osiris. Other gods weren't in favor of Sobek's eating habits as they were mostly dining on bread and cool water while eating large quantities of meat was frowned upon. The story goes as following. One day, Sobek the crocodile surprised a band of enemies and massacred them. A victim of his natural inclinations, he unhastingly devoured them all, but he carried their heads back home with him as proof of the exploit. The gods rushed toward him shouting, prevent him from eating them, give him bread, as he wasn't successful at controlling his desire for meat, he was often overwhelmed with cravings. When the dismembered Osiris was cast into denial, Sobek yielded to temptation and ate a part of his body. For this, he was punished by having his tongue cut out. In Egyptian mythology, this is why crocodiles have no tongues. When we look deeper into the unconscious, we find that there is a lot to explore. Our impulsive desires are just a part of the foggy landscape of our psyche, but they have a great impact on our behavior and relationships with other people. But most of all, they affect our well-being. Many of us are driven by instant pleasures and don't have a bigger picture in mind. As a consequence of indulging yourself in these shallow moments, a great misery occurs. But great misery can also be the cause of a volcano of reckless behavior. This is why we have to spark the light of meaning in life, to let the sun rays of consciousness touch what was kept hidden, forgotten, repressed. Only then can we strive on the road of individuation. Now let's conclude this video with a Carl Jung's quote. Until you make your unconscious conscious, it will direct your life and you will call it fate. This is it for today's video. We hope you enjoyed it and if you did, please like, share and comment. Thanks for building Olympus.